The fact is, Iran does not want a war with the United States. And the United States does not want a war with Iran. And it's the Israelis, especially Benjamin Netanyahu, has been, who has been trying to sort of suck us into a war. Because he wants us, the United States, to really whack Iran. Well, I'll start by saying that, you know, obviously John Mersheimer has made a lot of great contributions, but I think we should understand what framework he's coming from, because this is not that well understood. A lot of people who aren't familiar with international relations in, in the U.S. academia think that Mersheimer is like a, a dove because they've seen him talk about the war in Ukraine and justifiably point out that the U.S. and NATO bear responsibility significantly for causing the war in Ukraine with the U.S.-backed coup in Ukraine in 2014, NATO expansion of Russia's borders. But Mersheimer is not in any way a dove. In fact, he, I would argue, is basically, he's the realist wing of U.S. imperialism. I mean, so for instance, if you listen to Mersheimer talk about China, he's an extreme China hawk. And basically, I mean, so he comes from, he's the founder of the school of offensive realism in IR theory and essentially argues that there's this anarchic world, there are no authorities above nation states, and that essentially any other state in the U.S. position would be acting in a comparable way, that all states are inherently aggressive and, and how they see how they defend what they see as their perceived security interests. He doesn't distinguish between the systems of states and, and basically says that if China were in the same position as the U.S., but with its system, that China would act in the same way, which I think is ridiculous. And I think this informs his view of Israel. So Mersheimer is also known for writing this book, along with Stephen Walt, on the Israel lobby, essentially arguing that the reason that the U.S. so strongly supports Israel is because of the lobby. I think this is ridiculous. And this is, again, this is a way that some realist imperialists would see the U.S. essentially arguing that, well, the U.S. would not be supporting this Israeli colonial project were it not for support the money and the influence of the lobby. No, that's ridiculous. I mean, Israel, this is this idea that Israel is the tail wagging the dog. It's outrageous. Israel is an extension of U.S. imperialism. And honestly, at this point, the U.S. influence in West Asia, one of the most strategic regions on earth, has become so weak that were it not for Israel, the U.S. would probably be pushed out of this region. Now, it is true that the U.S. does have military bases in Qatar, in Saudi Arabia, in Jordan. It does have significant influence. But even if you look at Saudi Arabia, historically a country that has been essentially a U.S. client regime, its largest trading partner is China. Saudi Arabia is very clearly playing both sides in this new Cold War, encouraging closer ties with China and Russia. Saudi Arabia is considering joining BRICS, although it officially has not done so. So it really is pursuing this kind of non-aligned foreign policy, which would have been unimaginable a few decades ago. The United Arab Emirates is exactly the same, also joining BRICS. And Israel is really the last bastion of this colonial project that was created by the British Empire. And then after the 1967 war, it really became a kind of US protectorate. And then you look not only structurally at the fact that every single U.S. president has strongly supported Israel, provided many billions of dollars of military support. There is deep uh, interaction, training, uh, exercises between the U.S. military and the Israeli military. And there's the fact that Netanyahu himself is an American. He had U.S. citizenship twice. He was educated in the U.S. He went to high school and college in the U.S. He got his first job in the U.S., then he was working in Boston with Mitt Romney. Then he gave up his citizenship, but then he also became Israel's. He worked at the Israeli um, embassy in the U.S. So, I mean, Netanyahu is, is an American. The point is, is that these projects are inextricably tied, just as in order to understand where Israel comes from, you have to go back to the European Zionist movement, the father of which, the political father of which was Theodor Herzl, who was expressly a European colonialist. He wrote letters to... Cecil Rhodes, the genocidal colonialist in, uh, in, in Africa, after which Rhodesia was named. And uh, so Theodore Herzl comes from the European colonialist milieu. And then the British Empire in 1917 
gives its blessing to the creation of Israel with the Balfour Declaration. And then, so the point is that Israel was always this kind of colonial project. So I don't, I don't agree with this analysis that Mersheimer has put forward that the U.S. is not, not strongly supporting what Israel is doing. And these people who believe what U.S. politicians say rhetorically, it was Biden himself who has reiterated, if Israel didn't exist, we would have to create Israel. He said this originally in the 1980s when he was a senator. He said, if you go back and listen to his full speech in the Senate, Biden said, the investment we make in, in Israel is the best investment we make, even better than NATO. He said Israel plays a stronger strategic role than NATO because he understands that without Israel, the U.S. loses its very significant influence in West Asia, which, again, has been declining and waning. And also, it's not just the hydrocarbons. Clearly, that's very important. But if you think the fact that West Asia is this crucial region that connects the rest of Asia to Europe, that connects into the Mediterranean, that has multiple geostrategic choke points, not only, of course, the Suez Canal, but also there are many other strategic choke points. We've seen, for instance, now the, the Yemen Yemeni resistance has been trying to, to block access to the southern port in, in Israel. And furthermore, the Strait of Hormuz, which is probably the most strategic choke point on Earth, that if there's all this discussion in, in Western think tanks and the Brookings Institution and such, that if there were ever a war, that um, that Israel, that uh, Iran could block off the, like a full-on war involving Iran, that Iran could block off the Strait of Hormuz. So the reality is that, I mean, as a former U.S. Secretary of State, Alexander Haig put it, Israel is an unsinkable aircraft carrier for the United States. So the reason I mention all of that is, we can't understand what's going on now, especially with with Lebanon and in general, the possibility of the war expanding to in, involve a direct Israeli war with Lebanon and potentially with Iran. I don't buy this argument that the U.S. is hesitant because this is the media narrative that you have a bunch of obedient mouthpieces, stenographers in the media who get fed this information from insiders in the Biden administration who claim the U.S. is trying to bring about a ceasefire. The U.S. is trying to de-escalate. The latest term we've heard, which is outrageous, is that Israel's policy is de-escalation through escalation. I mean, this is a dystopian phrase. Israel is trying to de-escalate by escalating. I mean, is, so Israel is trying to bring about peace through war. I mean, it's, it's nonsensical. This is what the marketing narrative is. But in, in reality, the the U.S. could stop all of these conflicts immediately if it were to say to Israel, we're no longer going to give you weapons. We're no longer going to give you ammunition. It has been acknowledged by top Israeli officials in Israeli newspapers like Haaretz that if the U.S. were to end military support for Israel, Israel could not wage this war. So it doesn't matter if some unnamed U.S. officials claim that they don't want Israel to escalate. They don't want a, a, a broader war with Lebanon. They don't support the relentless bombing of civilians in Gaza. They have to put their money where their mouth is. And they could end this war overnight if they said we're no longer going to give you weapons.